you remember your first game of Dungeons and Dragons? I was around 14 years old and a group I had recently met through school stuff invited me to come play. I obviously said yes, but I was still terrified. These people knew the lore, they had all the 3.5 books. I had only ever seen the player's handbook in passing at a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> me being Mr. Anxiety and Overthinker at 14, I wasn't even sure if they wanted me there or if they were just being nice when they invited me. Well now, 13 years later, it has just occurred to me. Other people who are new to the game might experience similar feelings when I invite them to play. So, in an effort to make a new player feel a little more comfortable on day one, let's put together a character box to welcome her to D&D. Starting with a miniature. Our new player told me a few key things. She wanted to be a halfling that gets along well with animals, and she wants to heal people with her cooking. She loves the cozy, the quirky, and the cute, so this halfling riding a dog was perfect for her. I'm still trying to figure out what class and subclass are best to flavor for this, so please let me know down below if you have a good idea or if you have any homebrew resources that you think would fit this. I am so excited for this character to come to life. Side note, I have no clue how I missed so many spots on her hair. That, I, anyway, next we are giving the gift of knowledge. Here I am printing out a little table that breaks down everything you can do with your movement, your action, bonus action, and reaction. This is something I really wish I had when I first started playing. So with a quick look down, our player will be able to know, oh, if I wanna climb that wall, it's gonna be 10 feet of movement per five feet of progress. Or if they're stuck in combat and don't know what to do, they can once again look down and remember that they can help an ally and give them advantage. Or they can declare dodge and increase their defense. Let me know if you think there is anything that would be more helpful to a new player other than this. I definitely want to improve these over time, but for now we will mod podge this onto the inside of the character box. Now the reason we are mod podging this onto the inside of the lid is the same reason we have a box to begin with. All of the first session notes that I took on the rules and everything else that happened on my first day, I lost. I lost day one because I didn't come with a binder, I didn't come with a nice book, I borrowed some printer paper, and then all of that disappeared into the void. So we have mod podge, so we will use mod podge. <laughs> The tins I'm using, I got off Amazon in bulk for a whole nother project. I just have a bunch left over, but I'll put those in a, down in the description for you. But now we move on to the dice. Dice are easily borrowed and easily shared, but there is something that happens when you have your own set of dice. The failures and the successes become personal, and you know which dice are lucky and which deserve to be in dice jail. <laughs> dice superstition can be considered a silly part of D&D, but that's what makes it so special, and I want our new player to be able to join in on that from day one. Fun fact, I still have my very first D20. It's one of those classic blue and red metallic-y D20s. Anyway, I love that die, it's my lucky die, and I will cry if I ever lose that. <laughs> And now we breathe life into the box by painting on the name that our player has given us for the character, and we welcome Petal into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I'm super excited for Petal to be here, and I hope in some way that this box, with its little bits of knowledge and its little bits of tools, helps Petal have a great first experience on a longer term campaign. A bonus item that I plan to include in this box, as well as all future ones, are spell cards and ability cards. Here are some generic proof of concept cards to put in for now. Spells can be overwhelming, at least they were for me as a new player, so I hope to always include a few hand-selected or handmade in this situation spells for a player to look through so they don't have to go through their entire spell list to get started. Once again, please let me know if there's anything you think I should add to these or if there's anything you think I should remove from these character boxes. And I do want to clarify, new Dungeon Masters, you don't need to make these in order for your players to feel welcome and players, you don't need to get one of these in order to have fun. Even with being super anxious going into my first session, I had a blast. And DMs, if you're looking for something a little more accessible to work with, Altoid Tins. I used these to make some character boxes for a one-shot recently. I was able to fit a mini, some mini dice, and also the action and bonus action I cut out to fit in here along with the movement. So yeah, keep playing TTRPGs. Like, subscribe, have a fantastic day or evening or whatever time it is.